Brother, what if I told you you could pay off removal with six free power on the board, two tapped zombies? You call me crazy. They called me crazy because I told the truth. The new Gisa is an excellent commander and I'm going to tell you why. Alright, Gisa's been around since Commander 2014. I first saw this card and immediately knew I wanted to do a deep lore dive on her back then, so I read up on some of the lore from Innistrad. Turns out, she's a necromancer, bringing back zombies from their graves, being a general nuisance, getting in a war with her brother. She's an analog to Harley Quinn, kinda. You know, she's mentally damaged, but conventionally attractive and she's a lunatic. Now, of course, she's back in Thunder Junction, playing her part in the story, but frankly, it's kinda dumb. Her entire arc was a little dumb. Her and her twin Garolf, they played zombie games, they won zombie prizes, they killed Micaeus, which of course gave us one of the coolest cards in the game. Anyways, man, she's got a new card and I'm here to explore it, critique it, complain about the art, and just chat about cards, man. It's just a fireside chat, brother. And if you like that style of video, like, subscribe, leave a comment, and you can buy me a coffee at the link in the description. The original in uh, 2014 was a real goth prom queen dude, ghoul caller Gisa. So this thing, you had black sacrifice another creature, create X 2-2 black zombie creature tokens, where X is the sacrifice creature's power. This card loves making high power creatures into zombies. You can do some shenanigans with Phyrexian Dreadnought, of course, but doesn't necessarily need zombies. One of my favorite things to do was build big black mana that pump up a dread shade, sack them to make a bunch of tokens. Now this strategy may have worked in 2014, but it's slow and clunky by today's standards. By the time I get that done, old Fuzzy Nuts over there has all his lands on the table and 10 copies of a crater hoof ready to slap me in the face. It's 5 mana taps to do its thing, but the original Gisa was one of my first loves. Then in 2016, the fleshy tentacle monsters came along, Gisa and Garalf teamed up, and kind of built this fairly bland self mail reanimator zombie tribal commander. Bit of a different look here for Gisa. I like this card just fine. And then in the year of our lord 2021 came Gisa Glorious Resurrector. I like this card a lot man. It's got a lot of character. Kind of captures that queen of the graveyard life of the party feeling to it. Looks like Sweet D from Sunny in Philadelphia. I love this in decks that kill your opponent's stuff with a little consistency. Also nukes any graveyard synergies your opponents have going on. Oh my god, Gisa, what happened to your face here, dude? We got the Bradley Cooper treatment here. Gisa the Hellraiser, 3 black black for a legendary creature. Human warlock, it's a 4-4 four, four with war 2 and pay 2 life. Skeletons and zombies you control get plus 1, plus 1 and have menace. Whenever you commit a crime, create 2 tapped, 2-2 two, two blue and black zombie rogue creature tokens. This ability triggers only once each turn. That last ability is such a bummer, dude, but we can maximize this in the eight zombies every turn cycle, and Gisa rewards interaction, which can be really nice. Though I prefer my zombie decks to have blue, let's see what's in the toolbox here. It sucks that they come in tapped, but that's life in the big city, dog. Tough tooties, as the kids say. The zombies are also rogues. Why? I don't know, but that may have interesting implications as well. Now the art treatments are a little suspect. She's not cute anymore in this art, not sure why that is. Looks like a dang reptile from G.I. Joe or the equally bad 80s sci-fi saga V, where aliens invaded Earth and some lady gave birth to an alien baby man. First off is the obvious zombie lord synergy. Skeletons too, but those are a little few and far between. We don't have too many skeletons we need to worry about. Essentially, when you commit a crime, once per turn you're creating two 3-3s three with menace. Those are beefy zombies, dude. And guess what? Targeting lands as a crime may as well be a crime in real life. You want to see someone go wee 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 all the way home, target their lands, dude. You can run effects like Zombie Trailblazer. Black, black, black for a creature. Zombie Scout, it's a 2-2. Two, two. Tap and untap zombie you control. Target land becomes a swamp until end of turn. Tap and untap zombie you control. Target creature gains swamp walk until end of turn. Some zombies are naturally reborn leaders, right? Just like our own presidential candidates, Donald Trump and Joe Biden. You're committing crimes wall to wall, just like these two idiots, man. See... I'm turning this in the politics channel, dude, but it's fair and balanced. Both of these guys look like the zombie trailblazer, if we're being honest. Now, I know y'all are thinking this might be a bad card, you know, this Gisa, but I think of it like Talrand. Every commander I evaluate needs to be compared to Talrand on the Talrand scale. How Talrand is Gisa? Well, it turns out she's pretty Talrand on that scale, like 75%. I think there's a deck here, it's all instant speed interaction. Zombie Lords draw spells that capitalize on your zombie tokens. Basically draw, play land, cast a little something, and pass with open mana. Kill spells, cheap reanimate spells to get stuff killed when you pay off all that with two zombies per turn. Is it viable? I think so. 
But part of what makes Talran so overwhelming is the control aspect. You pack a lot more counter magic to protect your side of the board. Mono Black doesn't have that, but Giza has native ward to pay two life, which is substantial, but lends itself to a very different deck than Talrand. But essentially you're making double the tokens and Black has a lot of ways to use those tokens at instant speed. So Aristocrats is always a way to go or sacrifice effects. You're also committing a crime when targeting cards in a graveyard. Reanimator's a fantastic way to go. Pack all those kill spells in there, bring them back in mass with some mass reanimation cards. So what did I do? What do you think I would do with a new Gisa card in 2024, dude? Gas prices are through the roof. We need to pay to be able to be even be alive, dude. Good luck seeing a doctor in 2024. I had a witch doctor take a look at my Phyrexian black oil infection. So I built a $50 shelf for Gisa to see what we got here. I didn't include her, obviously, because we don't know what she's going to cost. So now you're going to have a couple paths to go down. The first is Cheap Zombie Lords. All right, this is one of our main axes. Cemetery Reaper. This guy can also tap to target stuff in your opponent's graveyard. That's a crime, brother. Lord of the Undead. Just got a Centurion reprint, a reskin, if you will, in which the art, which looks beautiful, is obscured by sweet green lines, dude. Amazing in a game all about the artwork, they choose to put green lines in front of the beautiful art. This is irritating me, but I'm going to get over it. Then we have Death Baron. He's making little fellas even more of a threat with Death Touch and Menace from Gisa. Lord of the Accursed, he's just chilling in the Wild West. Unsure about what horse he rode in on. Probably going to use that ability uh, very little, but that's okay. Then we have Risen Executioner. This is good sack fodder for later. This is not a creature based deck, so if we sack this guy, getting him back shouldn't be too bad. Now we also have some zombie payoffs, Graveborn Muse, at the beginning of your upkeep you draw X cards and you lose X life where X is the number of zombies you control. Don't kill yourself with this. This is a great card to sacrifice to some cards I'll talk about later, but it can certainly get you 12 cards over the course of a game for sure. Undead Augur, zombies are going to die again, so this is a decent little draw engine that's also a zombie. Now remember, these little zombies are rogues as well. Rogues are a bit of an unsupported tribe. They don't have a ton of payoffs, but there are two that may be interesting here. You have Una's Blackguard, one in the black for a creature fairy rogue. It's a 1-1 one -one with flying. Each other rogue creature you control enters the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it. Whenever a creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it deals combat damage to a player, that player discards a card. This is pretty powerful on its own and merits inclusion. Looks like Kate Moss a little bit. Then we have Mary the Killing Quill, one black black for a legendary creature vampire assassin, it's a 3-2. Whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, exile it with a hit counter on it. Assassins, mercenaries, and rogues you control have death touch. Whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, you may remove a hit counter from a card that player owns in exile. If you do, draw a card and create two treasure tokens. This gives our tokens death touch, which is wild and has synergy with the whopping 18 kill spells in this deck. Killing your opponent's stuff is what this is all about, man. It's gonna make them nuts because you're committing crimes, dude. Also coincidentally, nukes graveyard strats. Now we're also playing mono black, so we can pack in stupid cards like Heraldic Banner. Give your little dudes a little boost, dude. We're not playing coffers and herb orcs. That's too expensive, man. This is a budget deck. All right, now hang on a sec. Hear me out. Put away the torches, the pitchforks, and the tar and feathers. Cage Sun, Gauntlet of Power, right? I know these cost 6 and 5 mana respectively. I know they're silly goose cards, but these bad boys can catapult you ahead in the later game. I have a fondness for these cards from my early days of Commander. And from there on out, it's like a Talran deck. 29 instants and 6 sorceries, just a bunch of cards that target our opponent's stuff. Let's highlight a few, but first take a look at these little guys. Alter's Reap, this is kind of emblematic of the six instant speed effects that we can do to sack a token, all right, or not a token, and draw two cards. This keeps your hand full, uses that instant speed leftover mana. Just wanted to mention these guys. So of course, let's get to our crimes, dude. Kill spells, go for the throat, infernal grasp, heartless act. Look at this guy, he's about to kill that poor gorilla. Very sad, very sad as they say. Power word kill. These are all super cheap cards, mana wise and budget wise. And those little caveats might screw you up, you know, non demon, non dragon, stuff like that. But that's what happens when you have a budget, man. Most of the time it's fine though. Kill a bunch of stuff, then on your turn, rise from the grave. Now, this is a very 
inefficient uh, reanimator spell, but you can put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. That creature is a black zombie in addition to its other colors and types. So now your opponent's Vorinclex is a black zombie dude, so it gets all the payoffs from your lords. Check this card out, Dark Dabbling. Two and a black for an instant. Regenerate target creature, draw a card. The next time the creature would be destroyed this turn, it isn't. Instead, tap it, remove all damage from it, and remove it from combat. If you have Spell Mastery, which you will, if there are two more instant or sorcery cards in your graveyard, also regenerate each other creature you control. So assuming you have Spell Mastery, regenerate an opponent's creature, commit that crime, dude. And then all of your stuff as well. You know, this can be a very versatile card if you're getting knocked in with combat damage. And you should never, ever mess with a woman who's been dark dabbling, brother. Take it from me, you're probably going to get gonorrhea. You can even dark dabble in response to a board wipe as long as it's not farewell or something like that. Or it says they cannot be regenerated, which happens from time to time. But now you're going to be playing swamps, right? Maybe 35 or so. So pack in this guy, the old Dread Presence. Three and a black for a creature nightmare, it's a 3-3. Whenever a swamp enters the battlefield under your control, you choose one. Draw a card, lose one life, or a dread presence deals two damage to any target and you gain two life. Look at this spooky fella out there. This is targeting your opponent's stuff and that's a crime. So that's the deck. Go check it out, goldfish it. Have fun with yourself in the darkness of a curtain room. An abattoir of broken dreams, if you will. This iteration of Gisa is a really neat build around that can get out of hand very quickly. The fun part of this is that your opponents never know what you're packing. I don't think this is amazingly powerful, but I have goldfished it a bunch of times. You know, having six five fives with Menace on turn six ready to swing is pretty neat, man. There's a lot of anthems in there. There are a lot of control elements as well, and it's a fun thing to build a non-traditional zombie deck. It's also great to see my girl Gisa back on the stage. Even if she got some bad plastic surgery for some reason, it's a little bit like Maureen Ponderosa. Snicky G for Better Commander, signing off.